none of your steps shall slide. The Father is by your side. So when trouble comes and you want to run, fear not, none of your steps shall slide. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online every Saturday. And right now, we are getting ready to read Psalms 34. It's up on my screen. I'm trying to see it. <laughs> Psalms 34 followed by Psalm 16, I believe. Um, any no it's Psalms 37. Anyway, we'll see how the Lord leads. But let's start at Psalms 34. Starting at verse 3. <clears throat> oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, O ye saints, for there is no want, no necessity, no lack, I'm trying to make it clear, no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life? Loveth many days that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, none of them are broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Now I'm going to stop right there. That's the end of that chapter. I want to share this with you. I looked up the word desolate. A lot of us, we read these words and we just skip right over it, right? Mm. They that hate the righteous shall be desolate. But at the end, none of God's servants, none of those that God has redeemed and trust in God, none of them will be desolate. Now, if you feel desolate on the inner man, you better go back to God because something's not lined up. There's some area where you're not trusting God, where you are allowing fear to consume you. And this is what I want you to hear what desolate really means. Because if one of these words strikes a chord in your spirit, in your heart, it's prayer time. You hear me? And I want you to hear what Webster says desolate means. Here we go. Now I go to the thesaurus so we can get right to all the substitute words. Desolate is another word for fear, feeling barren, dismal. Mm, mm, mm. Let's keep going. Um, deserted, abandoned. I'm, I'm just picking them out as they, as they pop up to me. Uh, lonely, isolated, 
miserable, sad, melancholy, unhappy, gloomy, despondent, depressed, mournful, disconsolate. Ah, thank you, Lord. Come ye disconsolate where ye languish come to the mercy seat I'm not going to sing because I'm not there I'm sorry fervently kneel come bring your wounded heart Come bear your sorrow. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Whatever you're feeling, whatever sadness, whatever grief stricken emotions, however is your spirit cast down, are you heavy hearted? Are you depressed? Are you mournful? Is, is your spirit downhearted? Are you feeling devastated? Are you feeling feelings of despair and, and anguish? Listen, y'all. God is the answer to those emotions. And if you belong to God, you should not allow any of those emotions anywhere near your mind or your heart. If you know that you are a child of God, rebuke that crap because that is nothing more than Satan spewing his mess all over you. It's nothing more than Satan coming to steal, kill, and destroy the joy you have in your heart, the peace you have in your heart. What does the word say? In the presence of God, there is joy. When, when he brings you peace, it is peace that passes all understanding. No matter how the rain falls, you don't get wet. No matter how cold it is, you don't get chilly. No matter how hot it is, you don't bust a sweat. Why? Because you're operating in the spirit. Your sights are above the elements. Now, I'm talking in the supernatural. I'm not talking in the physical. Of course, you're going to be cold if it's cold. Of course, you're going to get wet if it rains. My point is, when you are walking with the Lord, you are not given to the circumstances that are going on in your life unless you allow it. Unless you come into agreement with it. Do not come into agreement with Satan's little messengers and imps that come to disturb your peace. Don't let him trespass your turf like that. You see how these little chihuahuas, how they act, or even like Jeanette was teasing Lynn about how territorial and protective her dog is. When a, a stranger comes on a dog's turf, if they're on their job, they're going to be on attack mode. They're going to be on guard. They're going to be ready to pounce and protect. Why? Because they are territorial. They're not going to let you trespass on their turf. Why are we not the same way? God blessed us with our inheritance. Our inheritance includes joy, peace, wisdom, knowledge, love, mercy, kindness, comfort. Why are we, when we ought to be constantly reassured by the presence of God in our lives, by the word of God in the Bible, why are we so easily swayed, shaken, disturbed, you know, we should never be shaken to our core. We should not allow it. Because no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in society, no matter what's going on in these last days, God's got you in the palm of his hand. None of your steps shall slide. Thank you, Lord. That's what that word is. None of your steps shall slide. When I was walking with Milton, and he was 100% blind. That's my husband, my late husband. 
I I was so protective over him. I not only watched where his feet were going, I would also watch what was ahead of his head because he was six foot three. So I had to make sure he didn't bump his head on a branch of one of those trees on the side of the sidewalk. I had to make sure that I that nobody uh, assumed that he could see and would expect him to walk around them. I had to make sure I didn't allow him to bump into people or bump into chairs or bump into benches or trip over crack on the road. I had to watch carefully. Now, I'm human. I'm going to miss some things. There were times he bumped. There were times he stumbled. But guess what? That's while I was guiding him. But guess what, y'all? God has got your steps. Every one of your steps. He goes ahead of you and makes the crooked places straight and the rough places, the uneven places, the choppy places, the places where there were cracks and holes and pit, pit marks. He goes ahead of you and makes the rough places smooth. Bible calls it plain. He smooths out the playing field. He goes, he's always ahead of the game. So you have nothing to fear. Whatever crisis comes your way, God already knew it was coming long before you even had a, a hint of it in the air. Long before you got a whiff of it, God already knew what was coming. But he already had an answer for it as well. So no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what concerns you have, know that God's got it covered, y'all. Now, if I watched over Milton that carefully, how much more is the all-seeing, all-knowing, everywhere at once, omnipotent, all-powerful God? How much more is he doing in our lives? And your worry? You're fretful, you're fearful, you're shaken to your core, you're grumpy because of all your anxieties, you're short-tempered because you're so full of fear and worry. Why? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. <clears throat> yes, he is. He's in the world today. He's in your life. You have no need to fear. Okay, go with me to, wow, none of your steps shall slide. <laughs> none of your steps shall slide. That is ringing in my spirit. None of your steps shall slide. Keep that in the center of your, of your thought processes. During the day, during the week, during the month, none of your steps shall slide. God's got you, y'all. Okay. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon. All right. Go with me to Psalms 37. Wow. All right. We are going to start with verse... 28, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is the law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. There it is. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, y'all. No matter what, no matter what you hear, no matter what's coming down the pike, no matter what happens, no matter what's shaking, bacon. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. 
I have seen the wicked in great power spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet, 36, he passed away and lo, he was not. Yet I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Peace, y'all. Ah, oh, like I said, God is not on a coffee break. He is not on vacation. He has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken or abandoned you. None of your steps shall slide. The Father is by your side. So when trouble comes and you want to run, fear not, none of your steps shall slide. He is not leaving you out to the elements and throwing you to the wolves. That's not God's way. God is love. Love doesn't abandon. Love doesn't forget it. Oh, I forgot all about you. You were waiting on me. Oh, <laughs> I saw these sharp pairs of shoes and oh my goodness, I just had to get them. I forgot all about you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll be there in about two hours to pick you up. So go grab a bite to eat while you're waiting. Yeah, right. No, God doesn't do that to us. God doesn't stand us up, make a commitment. And then when you're expecting Nothing happens. See, some of you think God has forsaken you because he allowed your loved one to die when you prayed they would live. Well, see, that's a lie from the pit because you have no idea that your loved one might have been asking God to take them home. They wouldn't discuss it with you because they don't have the strength to argue with you about it. It's their life, not yours. They are here for the purpose God put them on this earth for, not to serve your purpose. So get over you and let them go. Okay. A lot of times when you wonder, well, how could God allow my child to be run over by a car? How could God allow so-and-so to be burned in the fire? How could God allow? You have no idea what kind of warnings God may have put out there. I remember, for example, just to give you a few examples. One time, like some of you are upset with God because he allowed your child to be incarcerated. Well, listen to this. Years ago when I was unsaved, this is before I ever thought of giving my heart to the Lord uh, as an adult, um, my friend and I, Marty, we, uh, we loved going shoplifting. It was like a sport, <laughs> just recreation, didn't have anything else to do, so let's go rip off a store for the fun of it, right? And we both had enough money. We both had good jobs. We could more than afford it, but we just wanted to get away with murder. So we went out there and we did some, some stealing. Now, check it out. One night we were getting ready to do our little do and she was getting out the car and I told her I wanted to finish my cigarette. That was one day I thank God for a cigarette. <laughs> and this is why. Because I was still puffing on a cigarette I had just lit up and the song that was on the radio was jamming. I turned, as I was getting ready to get out of the car, I turned the ignition off, the radio went silent, and this whole uh, dialogue or this whole monologue was going, it was a monologue going through my head. And God warned me, you're going to go in, you're going to get what you want, but on your way out, they're going to stop you. The security guard is going to keep you while they call the cops. The cops will come. They will detain you. They will handcuff you, take you in, and fingerprint you, and you will do time. Guess what? I was not saved when that happened. God did not have to tell me that, but he took the time to warn me. How many of your family members, how many of you, have been warned, but you did it anyway. A famous Christian singer 
told this story. I'm saying it as it's popping in my head. So I'm trying to follow God on this. A famous singer shared about how she was told by God not to marry a particular person. And as she was dressed, they had put so much money into this beautiful wedding. She felt obligated. The people were there. There was no way she could turn around now. And as they opened the door for her to procession down the aisle to her groom, she heard God speak clear as a bell. Don't do it. She did it anyway. And one day she found herself being picked up off the floor and body slammed right back down. Another time, she turned her head and a fist gave, grazed her cheek. All the time, she said she could see God's protection through her whole act of obedience, of disobedience. She disobeyed God and God spoke to her and said, you have made your choice. You have chosen him over me. But even during the period of disobedience, God was protecting her from getting broken bones, from being badly damaged, and made a way of escape. See, when we are in Christ, there are certain levels of protection, but you diminish that level when you disobey. You diminish that level when you turn a deaf ear to God's warning signals walking down the street or Mountain View. Uh, it's nighttime. Three guys, I don't know who they are. I know they're not from my neighborhood. They're working on a car or are they ripping it off? I don't know. And I walk over to the left side, the north side of the street to give them a wide berth, just out of precaution, not out of fear. So I'm walking down the street and this voice speaks to me. It was the voice of God. Cross over to the other side. And I, like a dummy, start to reason, well, I don't know who those guys, guys are. Cross over to the other side. And I'm like, but look, cross over to the other side now. I was, okay, I'm going, I'm going. If I had not listened to that voice and leaned to my own understanding, which was, I don't know those guys. I don't want them to hurt me. I would have, who knows what would have happened. Because that dog was right there. I didn't see it. It blended into the darkness. And it was watching me with a demonic stare. And I knew. I knew God had protected me from serious injury from that dog. See, God is protecting us every step of the way. Like the day when I felt that I was supposed to uh, stay home. And I kept getting in my car because I had all these runs I had to make. And then I offered to give a person a ride home. And the whole time I feel, I felt it all day long. There's an assignment on uh, aimed at me to have a car accident. I felt it. Felt it all day. Prayed against it. Bound. Took authority. Moved out by faith. Oh, the devil's not going to pin me down. I bind and rebuke it. I'm doing all that. But what God showed me five years after the fact, after the accident took place, that I was not supposed to get involved in, had I stayed home and obeyed the warning, God showed me all that you felt, all the close calls, that was me warning you all day long. But you went out from under that safety. So the best I could do was protect you while you were in the car, while the car was being totaled. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have a scratch. I had a little bruise on my left side where the door hit me. But I was not hurt, neither was my passenger. Listen, y'all. A lot of things happen in life. Some things we have to take responsibility for some of the choices we have made. Some of the rough spots we find ourselves in. It's because God may have told you, stay home and rest. And you went out anyway. Some of the financial pitfalls we find ourselves in. is because, it could be, because God said, hold on to that money. You're going to need it. 
what you saw a cute pair of shoes or a cute pocketbook or you saw a fine looking wig or nice a thing of cologne or jewelry or an outfit you just had to get it it was on sale and you had to get it y'all and now you're paying through the nose and you're up in arms because your money's funny and your change is strange god is there to go ahead of us to make the crooked places smooth straight and the rough places smooth but oftentimes, we're not having an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So because we're dull in hearing, the prayer we should be praying is, Lord, if I'm not hearing you, open my ears. If I'm not sensing you, if you're trying to tell me something, open my spirit to receive to have a good reception i don't want the static in the airwaves static of busyness in my life to make me dull of hearing because i'm too busy to be still and know that you are god this is pat's two cents making a quick announcement listen i just finished my book Dare to Unfold, End Times Prophecy. It is available on Amazon. The details will be below, along with the other three books that I've written in the past. Thank you very much. Now back to the message. You could have an easy solution for me, but I'm so busy out there ripping and running, trying to put out my own fires. I don't have time to hear what you have to say. So life comes hard. Why? because I'm not hearing the easy solutions you're giving me. There, there, are, there are people who are trying to reach a goal. They're trying to, uh, to, to complete something, complete a task. They're trying to accomplish something. And they always seem to come short. They get right to that point where they're about to cross over the finish line. And they always seem, something always comes up. Well, see, there are times when something comes up because you allow it to come up. There are times when Jack pops his head out that box. Now, if you're busy doing something, you might not even have time to take your hand to push that lid on the box. But if you sit there and waste your time on Jack coming out the box, the task you're doing may never get done because you're constantly allowing yourself to be pulled over here. Grandbaby needs you. Your aunt needs you. The neighbor down the street gave you a call because they're lonely. They need to talk and you feel like you being a Christian, you got to keep them company. No, you're on an assignment. God put you on. Stay there. Stay the course. Get the job done. Shut everything else out and consecrate that time to do what God told you to do. All right. So when he says your steps shall not slide, he will keep you in the straight and narrow. He will be your traffic cop. He will be the vehicle that gets you there. But you have to cooperate with him, not what's going on between, you know, the, the, those two little pebbles between your ears. You don't line up with what your mind says. You line up with what God says. God will give you reason. He will give you wisdom. He will give you cunning. He will give you witty ideas and inventions. But are you asking? And after you ask, are you waiting on the Lord? There are things God wants you to do. I don't care if you're 17 or, or 107. There's always that something, something that God could use you to do. Even if it's just sitting down at 107, talking to your seven-year-old great, 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 great grandchild to get them to line up with God's life. 
or just lay hands on that child and pray for them. You have no idea the impact of the anointing that's on your life. But if you're out there too busy to hear what God has to say, if you're too busy to hear his warnings, if you're too busy to hear his direction, if you're allowing too many people to pull at you, there's one person I know right now, I stay on their case about getting their degree. Mm -hmm. And I do that because they are allowing too many people out there to pull on their lives. And they can't seem to finish what they were supposed to do for God because they're so busy do, do, doing for people. Don't allow Satan to bombard you like that. Don't allow it. Okay. And don't allow Satan to bombard your mind or your emotions with negative emotions, with fear, with worry, with depression. You kick that to the curb, baby. You don't let it lodge itself in your heart and kick up their feet on the couch and, and lean back and relax. No, that's your inheritance, not the enemy's. He has no business in your thoughts. He has no business in your emotions. So you do that spiritual warfare you know to do and rebuke the spirit of, of melancholy, rebuke the spirit of depression, rebuke the spirit of fear, rebuke the spirit of guilt. Whatever it is, if it's negative and you know it's not of God, why are you agreeing with it? Oh, it's my fault. If I had done this, that would, if I had, no, 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 no. Therefore, now, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. As long as you persist on walking after the spirit, you're in a safe place, baby. No condemnation there. You hear me? All right, so this is not going to be a long message, but I hope it encourages you to trust in God, lean on God, listen for God, pour your heart out to God, bear your concerns and your fears to him, and then have him take those fears away. This too shall pass. Amen? All right.